Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Alison. I write as Alison May, 50% of Juliet Bell and most recently as Ali Sinclair and every Friday on YouTube I talk about writing and publishing and all things related and today we are talking about every writer's absolute favourite subject. We are talking about rejection! Yay! So if you want to, you know, sit here for the next 10 minutes and be depressed while I talk about rejection, please stick with me and join me. Um, please also subscribe to this channel, it makes such a difference to YouTube creators uh, if you subscribe. So please, please, please subscribe if you're interested in writing and publishing contract. Contract? You see, I started talking about rejection and straight away I'm thinking about contracts. If you are interested in writing and publishing content, um, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you get notifications when there are new videos. Rejection. So, every writer gets rejected. Every writer gets rejected multiple times and they get rejected throughout their career. There are lots of different forms of rejection and as a writer you have to sort of get used to and learn to love all of them. Sorry, I'm very distracted about how big my um, lady bosoms look in this top at this camera angle. That is quite startling. Um, sorry. Um, moving on. Um, there are lots of different types of rejection and you will have to deal with all of them at different points in your career, no doubt. So we're going to start by running through some of the different types of rejection that you might get. And straight in at number one, probably the most common form of rejection is the form rejection. So you send in a slush pile submission to an agent or to an editor and the rejection you get back is is the standard, thank you for sending your submission. Unfortunately, we do not think it's right for our list at this time. Regards, agent, kiss, kiss, kiss. Um, and that is all you get. Allied to this, closely related um, to this, is the ghost rejection, where you actually just don't get anything. Um, more and more agents actually say on their website now, if you haven't heard from us within X weeks, um, assume we're not interested. Um, so you can quite often just get ghost rejections, even if they don't have that on their website. You have to reach a point, I would usually say about 12 weeks, where you just tick it off your spreadsheet and assume it's a no. If they come back to you later, yay. But realistically, that's probably gone. Um, just on a practical point there, if I have stuff out on, if I had stuff out on slush pile submission, I would usually chase it after about six weeks, send a polite reminder, reattach the whole submission, just say, just checking that you've received my email, um, please find reattached my submission. Um, and then about four weeks or about 12 weeks in total after that, I would just assume it's a no and move on. Um, so form rejections, ghost rejections, those are the sort of the standard and probably what you will get the most often. A step up from that is a slightly more detailed rejection. So still a rejection on the initial query, the first three chapters, the first 5,000 words, whatever it is, but with a bit more detail and a bit more context. So maybe some actual feedback. Step up from that is the full manuscript rejection. So you get a request for the full manuscript after your initial submission, and then you get rejected from the full manuscript. And I'm grouping those two together because both of those rejections are actually really, really good news. Because what both of those types of rejections, the ones where an agent already has taken time to give feedback, and the ones where they've requested the full manuscript, what both of those are saying is, you have potential as a writer, there's something here that's interested, ding, there's something here that's worth me investing time in, um, so those are really positive. They don't feel positive at the time, but those are both really positive. So those are big ticks. And then the fourth type of rejection that we talk about much less than the others is later career rejection and mid-career rejection. Because rejection isn't something that just happens to you at the start of your career and then after that it's plain sailing. You will get rejected throughout your career. Maybe you're out of contract so you go back into a slush pile submission situation. Maybe you have an idea you're really burning to write but your editor just doesn't like it, isn't going to go for it. Maybe you write a full manuscript that you think your agent editor has agreed and they read the full and actually go, yeah, actually, no, this isn't kind of what I thought we'd agreed. This isn't speaking to me in the way that I hoped it would. No. So rejection is constant all the way through your career. 
rejection doesn't mean that you're a bad writer. Rejection can be for lots of different reasons. It can be because the manuscript isn't up to scratch. Even if that is the reason, it doesn't mean you're a bad writer. We all have bad days or bad six months at the office. We all sometimes have ideas that we think are really interesting and it's just nearly there, but we can't quite work out how to get it across on the page. We can't quite pull it all together. Doesn't mean you're a bad writer. It just means you've written a bad manuscript. Those aren't the same thing. Or and this is common for a lot of rejections, it's nothing to do with you or the quality of your writing or the quality of your story at all. It's because the agent has a full list. It's because they've taken on something really similar quite recently. It's because they have too much in this genre on their list already and they're looking for something different now. It's because they feel like you're competing with an author that they're already representing. All of those things. And there's nothing you can do about any of those things. Those are beyond your control. So the key advice here is don't read too much into rejections, particularly form rejections, standard rejections at the first hurdle, because all those mean is that that agent or editor looked at your first couple of pages, didn't fall in love with it and moved on to the next. Now, they may not have fallen in love with it for a thousand and one reasons that are to do with them that have nothing to do with your manuscript. So you can't from that form rejection, conclude that your manuscript is terrible, conclude that you're no good, conclude that you should stop writing and do something else instead, because that isn't implied by that form rejection. So form rejections, you really just have to tick off on your spreadsheet and move on. If you get a bit more detail, if you get a bit of feedback, that's where I would say, think about it. Think about whether the feedback gels with you, and it may not, it may be like, okay, well, that's your opinion, but that isn't quite the story I want to tell, so, okay. And think about whether you get the same feedback repeated. If you get the same feedback from a couple, two or three or four rejections, that's the point where you might think, okay, maybe I need to go back and revise, maybe I need to go back and re-edit this manuscript. Rejection is normal. The other biggest piece of advice I always give to new authors dealing with rejection is don't give up too quickly. Quite often I'll be working with a writer and um, doing some mentoring and they'll say, oh, well, this manuscript's been rejected everywhere. And the first question I always ask is how many rejections have you had? If that number is less than 35, then unless it's a really, really niche story that is only going to place with a very few specific publishers, then you haven't been rejected everywhere. Uh, Sweet Nothing now re-released as Much Do About Loving, uh, which was my first published novel, was rejected 38 places. And that isn't unusual, that isn't uncommon. Um, All That Was Lost, which was the novel I agented with, that was rejected by, I think, 10 agents um, before I got offers of representation. But that was quick. I was really pleased with that. I was like, oh, wow, only 10 down and I get off of representation. That was fast. So if you're writing something reasonably mainstream, if you're writing commercial fiction, certainly in the UK, I would be expect you to be able to put together an agent list that had at least 30 to 40 agents, potential agents on it, and then potentially a list of publishers who take on agented submissions that would probably be another eight or ten at least. So unless you're talking about those sorts of numbers, you haven't been rejected everywhere and you need to you need to keep trying essentially, because you don't know when the yes is going to come and you do only need one. The other thing, while you've got work out on submission, because this process takes time, if you're waiting weeks and weeks for particular sets of agents and editors to come back to you before you send it out to more places, um, and I would usually suggest sending out in small groups, so send out like five or six at a time. When you get a rejection, send immediately to the next one on your list. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. But while that is going on in the background, start writing something else. Because if your brain is deep into your next book, it's much easier to emotionally kind of detach a little bit from the first one, and then hopefully any rejections you get on that will just knock you that little bit less. So those are my super quick thoughts about rejection. 
don't read too much into it. It really does happen to everybody. If you're struggling with rejection and you're struggling with the submission and query process as a result of that, set yourself a challenge. Set yourself a challenge to get 50 rejections this year. That's your goal. That means that every rejection is an achievement and it will force you to submit. The only way to get rejected is to send stuff out on submission and every rejection is an achievement because every rejection says you stuck your head over the power pet and you had a go and you're getting your work out there, which is what you need to be doing. So you set yourself that goal of getting 50 rejections in the next year and crack on writing the next thing while you do it. Farewell.